Okay, class. In these few videos, we are going to discuss the stroke. There was a 156 year old gentleman who has come to see me last year August. The main reason why he came to see me was actually because of the nausea. He presented as nausea for one week, comes and goes. The nausea is not severe. So it, it was actually mild nausea. He also presented as poor appetite, stomach fullness, and, or abdominal fullness, constipation. So these are the chief complaints. The main reason is because of the nausea. When you see this group of symptoms, this patient seems to suffer from digestive system problems. However, during the, con the consultation, after the inquiry, when we discuss the, the symptoms, the medical histories, all those, when it comes to the observation, when I observed that tongue, I realized his tongue deviated to one side. So it's not in the center. When we see this kind of tongue, the first thing we should reflect in your mind is this patient may suffer from stroke. However, this patient doesn't present any or doesn't present any typical symptoms of stroke, such as hemiplegia or the speech disorder. The patient doesn't have any kind of these symptoms. And then I ask the patient to, to think what happens before the nausea. Is there any other symptoms that he can recall? Then the patient told me that he experienced a slight headache a few days before the nausea, and then the, head, the, the headache disappeared. He also presents as nausea currently. He was a follow up patient for me, so he has came to me for quite a few times. I knew that his tongue is in the center before because when I see this kind of a tongue, I will remember the appearance of this patient. So I, in my memory, his tongue is in the center, it should be in the center, but now deviated to one side, which means something happens in the brain. It must be the, the stroke. It can be the mild stroke. That's why the patient didn't present other typical symptoms. This patient also suffered from diabetes for five years. He didn't monitor his blood sugar, but in general, from the blood test, we can see the fasting blood sugar level was 8 to 11, so slightly high. This patient, from the treatments, I used, I used the herbal medicine treatments. I didn't focus on the digestive system. I used the formula for stroke. After a few days, when I followed up with the patient, the, the nausea recovered. We used this case at the beginning of the stroke. We try to present the, the clinical situation that observation is very important in stroke. This was a real stroke, clinical case. When we talk about stroke, What's, what's a stroke? Stroke. The term of stroke in traditional Chinese, Chinese medicine, we use it as the disease name. In conventional me medicine, they also use stroke, but this stroke is not a specific disease. So uh, they all actually refer to a broader sense, a group of disease. When we see the definition from Chinese medicine, it it is an emergency case. The manifestation, sudden falling down, loss of consciousness, or hemiplegia, slurred speech, deviated mouth. And sometimes the patient may present with uh, these symptoms without unconsciousness. When you see this definition, you will realize that 
the stroke in Chinese medicine actually refers to a group of different diseases, especially the diseases that are related to CVD, cerebral vascular diseases. In general, it can be in categorized into two categories. Cerebral infarction, ischemic stroke, or hemorrhagic strokes. So one is the lack of blood, the blockage. So the other one is the bleeding. Or when we talk more specifically, there's another one type of stroke that we need to understand is also in the ischemic stroke category, but this is a slightly different TIA. Transient ischemic attack. The TIA is temporary dysfunction of the brain. Temporary means it may last for any time from 10 to 20 minutes. Most of them can be relieved automatically within one hour. It shouldn't be last for longer than 24 hours. Sometimes it, it is very difficult to diagnose TIA is because once the TIA recovered, the patient you, you can't find any evidence in the brain. So there's 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 actually no damage to the brain once once it recovered. So from the image from the CT, the brain CT or the MRI, you can you can cannot find any evidence. If a patient presents as TIA, we need to be careful because TIA is one of the risk factors of stroke. Many patients can present as stroke after TIA. About four to eight percent of the patient suffer from ischemic stroke after TIA. About twelve to thirteen percent of patients can may suffer from stroke after TIA within one year. Within five years, about 24 to 29% of patients will suffer from stroke. So the TIA actually is like a, a very early sign of the stroke. And then if you implement some interventions at this time, you may prevent the patient suffer from stroke afterwards. Male are more likely to suffer from TIA than female. Also, the, the age. So the mechanism of TIA from conventional medicine, there are many two causes. First, it, the, the changes the changes of the blood flow in the brain. This changes may due to the the narrow of the artery. It also can be the sparrow or the temporary sparrow of the artery or the veins, especially based on the changes of the, the, the blood pressure. So in this situation, it may result in the, the area where this artery supply the blood, the brain, the area, lack of blood. So in Chinese medicine, we call it lack of nourishment. This is from the physiological presentation, lack of blood due to the sparrow, the narrowing of the, the artery or other veins. The second reason is made from the tiny embolism in the, in the artery. Another cause made from the embolism, the tiny embolism from the vascular system. It can cause the blockage of the artery, the blood flow, but once this tiny Embolism has been resolved. The blood supply will recover automatically. That's why temporarily TIA transient. The patient may present as TIA like frequent attack. Most of these patients will have some medical histories such as hypertension and the stiffness of the vascular system, diabetes, high cholesterol, these risk factors. 
Most of the patients present as sudden onset. The duration is very short. It shouldn't be more than 24 hours. If the patient presents as more than 24 hours, you must think about other diseases. Once TRA recovered, there will be no prognosis. But the patient may present, may have the frequent attack, especially with similar presentations. When we see a patient present as TRA, we need to try to find the potential risk factors. If possible, you also need to suggest the patient to go and see the specialists in this field. In the category of ischemic strokes, cerebral thrombus and cerebral embolism are quite similar. These two are all due to the blockage of the arteries in the brain. The, block, the blockage reduces the blood flow and oxygen to the brain, leading to the damage or death of the brain cells. There are differences between these two terms. The main differences is where does the, the clot comes from. Thrombosis can occur in any organ or tissues. It is a normal physiological response to bleeding. It helps the body to avoid ex excessive hemorrhage. However, in certain clinical states, thrombosis causes a disease or disability. If it happens in the brain, in the vessels in the brain, it results in stroke. If it happens in the coronary arteries, it causes the heart attack, myocardial infarction, or other heart conditions. The weight of the brain in an adult is about 1,500 grams. It only contributes about 2 to 3% of the body weight. However, the blood supply, the brain has very rich blood supply. The blood that flows through the brain or the brain tissue is about 700 to 1000 ml per minute. It contributes to 20% of the, the blood pump from the heart per minute. The oxygen cons consumption contributes 20 to 30 percent of the, con the entire consumption of the body. So if there's any blockage that's causing the lack of nourishment or lack of blood supply in a few minutes, actually in one or two minutes, you cause damage. After five minutes, if you cause severe damage, that cannot be recovered. Ischemic stroke is one of the most common type of strokes contributes 80% of all strokes. So here it explains the difference between the thrombus and the embolism. The lack of the oxygen in the brain tissue the results from the blockage cause either reversible injury if it is not prolonged or severe or death, or inversible damage of the tissue. If the interruption of the blood supply is prolonged or severe, so if more than five minutes, it will cause irreversible damage. About 60% of all strokes are thrombotic, and only 15 to 20% are embolic. Patients who suffer from embolism stroke you will normally have other diseases that are easily to result in the formation of the blood clot. And these clots sometimes may fall down and be trans transported to other parts of the body. If the clot stays in the brain, then it becomes a stroke. The cerebral embolism cause about 15 to 20 percent of all stroke and it also contributes about 25 percent of ischemic stroke. One of the differences between the thrombotic and embolic strokes 
is the on the, the onset. A thrombotic stroke. It takes time to develop the thrombosis. Sometimes it takes from a few hours to one or two days. So it can the the onset will be much slower. The onset of the embolic stroke will be much quicker. It may reach the peak or the peak symptom on a few seconds to a few minutes. It also can induce other symptoms such as seizures, severe headache, and epilepsy. But when you see the acute onset, but when we see the acute onset, we need to be careful. We have to differentiate with the hemorrhagic stroke, but also can happen in a few seconds. The lacuna in function refers to the small damage, the small damage, the arrow. In the, uh, in most of them less than 15 millimeter in the brain. These tiny damages, some uh, most of the condition, they don't present any symptoms. So sometimes the, even the patients, they don't know they have this infarction. And how they realize they suffer from the Kuna infarction is actually from the imagery. So if a patient suffer from headache, frequent headache, and then the doctors advise to have a CT scan, and then all of a sudden they see the Kuna infarction in the, from the image. So most of the situation, the, pa the patient don't have it, especially they don't have the typical stroke symptoms, such as the, the one we mentioned previously, hemiplegia and the deviation of the tongue or the face. So they don't present as these symptoms. They are more frequent in men and in African Americans, Hispanics and Asians. It is estimated that the, the Kuna infarction counts for about a quarter of all ischemic stroke with an instance of approximately 15 per 100,000 per year. These three different type of infarctions are in the category of ischemic stroke. The embolic stroke, because the thrombosis can develop from other areas and travel to the brain, so this clots also can travel to other area of the, the body. If you, it travels to the lung, it also cause the lack of the oxygen and blood supply in the lung. It will result in difficulty breathing, coughing, severe chest pain, coughing with blood. It also can travel to the kidney, it causes lack of blood in the kidney. The patient may present as the pain in the lumbar region and the blood in the urine. So it can it also may happen in other area of the body. For for stroke, it is very important that we need to employ the modern examinations, especially the CT and MRI scan. For the ischemic stroke, the patient presents a stroke the first few hours, actually the first 24 hours. On the CT image, you may not see any changes. No. From the CT image, it only can reflect after 24 to 48 hours. So sometimes the, if the patient comes to you now with the acute onset, you suspect that this patient, and then you send the patient to the, to the hospital to have a CT scan done, and then the result says negative. But the patient keeps developing the symptoms. What you need to do, you need to ask the patient to have the CT scan again after 24 hours or after 48 hours. The reason is because the swelling of the brain it will reach its peak in three to five days. So from this point of view, if the patient comes to you for two months, especially from the first day, you will see that the symptoms will be worse and worse. So in this situation, you need to explain to the patient that the, the disease, not about the treatment, but the disease of stroke will develop. The, the peak of the stroke is, especially the ischemic stroke, is not on the first day. As the, the treatment goes on, 
you may present worse symptoms, but after a few days, after three to five days, then you can stable and recover. So these are something we need to explain to the patient in advance. You shouldn't wait until the symptoms become worse and the patient and you both panic, though you don't know what's going on. These are the ischemic stroke. The ischemic stroke in MRI scan can reflect immediately. So, but uh, the problem for MRI, sc MRI scan is the MRI scan takes much longer. So, if you one scan, it takes about twenty to half, twenty to thirty minutes. The patient need to lie be lying in the machine for that such a long time, and then. Another problem is the cost of MRI scan. MRI scan is much more expensive than CT scan. So these two, sometimes it is very important to use both of them. Although CT scan cannot reflect the ischemic stroke in within 24 hours, but it is very important to apply CT scan immediately. The reason is because CT scan uh, is very quick to get the results, to get the reports. The second is from the stroke. Sometimes it is very difficult to identify ischemic or hemorrhagic because one is blockage, lack of blood supply. The other one is bleeding. The two types of stroke, the treatments will be very different. So, in order to treat the patients from the conventional medicine view, we need to identify is ischemic or hemorrhagic. In this situation, we can use a CT scan because if hem hemorrhagic the bleeding, we can see in the CT scan immediately. So, in the CT scan, when you see bright white color, then that's bleeding. You will have a few CT scan afterwards, and then you will see the differences between ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes that presents on the CT scan. For different kinds of stroke, if the patient has the ability to afford the medical services, we will require the patient to go to the hospital. So from Chinese medicine and acupuncture point of view, for this problem, most of the condition we don't treat patients independently. You can if you, the, the patient cannot afford or if there's no medical service available, then you can use Chinese herbal medicine or acupuncture to treat. But normally we won't suggest. The reason is because this disease sometimes is life threatening. From Chinese medicine and acupuncture, we are not good at emergency, especially such as lack of body fluid, such as the emergency situation that the patient will pass away or the patient may pass away in a few seconds. In this situation, we can, we, we can do nothing. So we will recommend the patient to have the conventional treatments in the meantime, and then we can apply acupuncture or herbal medicine. So here, there's one question here is, when to apply acupuncture mm -hmm. uh, in, in a stroke? No matter ischemic or hemorrhagic strokes, when should we apply acupuncture? The principle is the earlier the better. However, we need to wait until the patient is stable. The patient, the situation, the vital signs is stable. Once it's stable, then we can apply acupuncture. Acupuncture, it depends on the situation. You can apply once a day, even twice a day. The earlier, the better. The earlier, the, better, the, the patient can recover much quicker and much better. It's much less sequela. So it is very important to remember that the CT scan will not reflect within 24 hours for ischemic stroke. A few 
Truman principles that from the conventional message point of view is the, the earlier the better. We need to see less the best treatment plan or human man, the management plans for this patient. Okay. This type of disease is also just need to have an individualized treatment plan. The general life spots that just um, to monitor the blood pressure the oxygen supply. In some situations, the patient also pre may present as high blood sugar. The high blood sugar, the patient may have diabetes, may or may not. You, you also need to monitor the blood sugar because, because sometimes in this situation, the body will overreact. So the patient may present as blood sugar, uh, the high blood sugar. In this situation, we need to monitor to keep the blood sugar below 8.3. The edema, the inflammation, that's to prevent the inflammation. In some situations, the patient may present as a fever as well as the, the bleeding in the upper, upper digestive system. So all these are something we need to consider. However, as I mentioned previously, that's these point, these parts, the conventional medicine, they will also, they will focus on these parts, and then we will focus on the treatment. So the life spots, we will rely on the conventional medicine if we can. If not, then you will have to use herbal medicine. In this video, we mainly introduce the ischemic stroke, a very brief introduction to the ischemic stroke. This introduction is far not enough for you to understand the ischemic stroke well. So you are encouraged to read some materials from conventional medicine to understand better for ischemic stroke. From the next video, we are going to continue the discussion on the stroke, the hemorrhagic stroke, from conventional medicine point of view. We need to understand the what happens to the to the brain to the to the patient, and then we will move on the treatment for acupuncture. Thank you for your attention.